attention today. China said the United States has played an extremely dishonorable role in supporting and cooperating with the Philippines, using issues in the South China Sea to provoke relations between China and the region. It is very clear to the discerning eye who the Philippines is serving in its foreign policy and for whom it is working in its maritime operations. China's foreign ministry said on Monday in response to recent remarks by the Philippine president. China is willing to continue to work with ASEAN countries, including the Philippines, to manage differences at sea and deep in sea-related cooperation, it said. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Juro on Friday denounced illegal, coercive and aggressive actions in disputed waters of the South China Sea. Philippine President Marcos's remarks concerning the South China Sea issue disregard history and facts, and are designed to amplify the Philippines' wrongful position on the issues and deliberately distort and hype up the maritime situation, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said on Monday. The spokesperson made the remarks when asked to comment on a keynote speech by Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. at the 21st Shangri-La Dialogue, in which he explained the so-called legal basis for the Philippines' territory and maritime zones, claiming that both the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea UCLOS, and the 2016 Arbitral Award on the South China Sea affirm its legal right, and that its policy in the South China Sea is built upon these two touchstones. The spokesperson introduced China's position. First, China has indisputable sovereignty over Nanhai Judo, and sovereign rights and jurisdiction over relevant waters. China is the first to have discovered, named, and explored and utilized Nanhai Judo and relevant waters and the first to have exercised sovereignty and jurisdiction over them continuously, peacefully and effectively. China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea are based on solid historical and legal grounds. China's normal patrol, law enforcement and productive activities in waters under its own jurisdiction are consistent with international law, including the Human Convention on the Law of the Sea Ulysses, and such activities are beyond reproach. Second, the territory of the Philippines does not include China's Nanhai Judao. The Philippine territory is defined by a series of international treaties, including the 1898 Treaty of Peace between the United States of America and the Kingdom of Spain the 1900 Treaty between the United States of America and the Kingdom of Spain for cession of outlying islands of the Philippines. And the 1930 Convention between His Majesty in respect of the United Kingdom and the President of the United States regarding the boundary between the state of North Borneo and the Philippine Archipelago. China's Nansha Kwandao and Huangjindao are beyond the limits of the Philippine territory established by the above-mentioned treaties. The Philippines occupied by force some islands and reefs of China's Nansha Kwandao and adopted domestic legislation such as the Archipelagic Baselines Law to assert illegal territorial claims on China's Huangjindao and some islands and reefs of Nansha Kwandao. Those moves seriously violate China's sovereignty and sovereign rights and international law, including the UE Charter. China firmly opposes the moves. Third, the so-called arbitral award on the South China Sea is illegal, null and void, without the Chinese government's prior consent. The Philippines unilaterally initiated an international arbitration, which violated international law, including UECLOS and the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea Dossi. The arbitral tribunal in the South China Sea arbitration handled the case ultra virus and made it a legitimate ruling. The rendered award is illegal, null and void.
China neither accepts nor participates in that arbitration, neither accepts nor recognizes the award, and will never accept any claim or action arising from the award. China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea will not be affected by the award in any way. What the Philippines has been doing to glorify this illegal, invalid arbitral award does not help resolve its maritime disputes with China, still less justify its illegal claims in any way. Fourth, the responsibility for the recent escalation concerning the South China Sea issue between China and the Philippines lies fully with the Philippine side. The Philippines breached its commitments and the common understandings with China, violated the DOFs and repeatedly acted in bad faith. The Philippines frequently infringed on China's rights and made provocations at sea, brought in forces outside the region to form blocks and flex muscles in the South China Sea, and spread disinformation to vilify China and mislead the international perception on this matter. In particular, driven by selfish geopolitical calculations, the U.S. has played an extremely ignoble role by supporting and assisting the Philippines in infringing on China's sovereignty, and by exploiting the South China Sea issue to drive a wedge between China and other regional countries. Who exactly does the Philippine foreign policy serve now? Whose bidding is the Philippines doing with all these maritime actions? The answer is pretty clear to anyone with sound judgment. Trying desperately to justify the unjustifiable will not help the Philippines build trust with the international community. Countries in the region need to stay vigilant and always make sure that they themselves are the ones sitting in the driver's seat when it comes to the peace and stability of the South China Sea. If, with the joint efforts of China and ASEAN countries, the situation in the South China Sea is generally stable. There has been no issue at all regarding the freedom of navigation and overflight in the South China Sea that countries enjoy in accordance with law. China stands ready to continue working with ASEAN countries, including the Philippines, to manage maritime differences, deepen maritime cooperation, fully and effectively implement the DOS, actively advance the COC consultation, keep the South China Sea peaceful and stable, and ensure that the South China Sea remains a sea of peace, friendship, and cooperation. Sixth, China will continue to firmly defend its territorial sovereignty and maritime interests and rights. Meanwhile, we remain committed to properly handling maritime disputes and differences through negotiation and consultation with countries directly concerned on the basis of respecting historical facts. We urge the Philippines to honor its commitments and adhere to the limits of its territory established by the international treaties fully and effectively implement the DOS, stop maritime infringement activities and provocations at once, and return to the right track of handling maritime disputes and differences properly through dialogue and consultation as soon as possible. The spokesperson said, 